Okay, we are back and ready to move on to uh, starting to add some detail. So in this video, I want to cover just this storm drain. Uh, it's a could be a little bit of a tricky thing, but I've got some reference, uh, and I think I've got a relatively simple way to take care of that. So let's dive right in. Uh, by the way, I just found this image on Google. Just search storm drain or something like that. Uh, pretty easy to find. So, uh, in here I'm going to grab the curb and I'm going to top view. And the first thing I want to do is just define where this is going to be. And I'll do this in wireframe so I can use the grid for reference. Uh, remember the grid, the large squares are roughly one meter, or they are one meter, so that's roughly 3.2 feet if you're based on the imperial system. Uh, but I'm going to try to stick to metric. Uh, so I want this to be, I don't know, roughly two feet across, so two-thirds of a meter or so. So I'm going to add in an edge loop and I'll slide it around. I'll put it like here. Okay, that should work. And then I'll put another one. Let me zoom out so you can see this. There we go. And I'll add it there, and then I'll zoom in a little bit, double tap G and slide it around and just find a good kind of ratio. I think that'll work. Okay. So that's where my storm drain is going to be. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select all these faces, hit P, and separate by selection. And then we can rename this. We're going to call this storm drain frame. Because the storm drain is actually uh, two parts. We've got this frame, and then you have the grate that sits in it. So you can remove the grate and clean it out if you need to, or what have you. So we've uh, we've renamed that, although I didn't spell that correctly. There we go. That helps. OK. So tab into object mode. I'm going to select just that uh, new object and hit number pad slash. It's going to hide everything else except for the mesh that we need to work with for the storm drain. So I can go into edit mode on that, and I think the first thing I'm going to do is we need to define the area that's going to be kind of cut out. So I'm going to add in a, actually before I add, an, add in any edge loops, uh, this is uh, a great opportunity to use the mirror modifier. So I'm going to add an edge loop right in the center. And remember that's uh, control R to add an edge loop, left click to confirm, and then as it's sliding around, right click and it'll stay right in the center. Now I can go to top view, wireframe, select these vertices, and delete them. Okay, then we can add our mirror modifier. Now, when I add this, there's going to be an issue. And that's that the mirror is all the way over here. And the reason for that is because our origin is at the world origin and not at the uh, plane of symmetry for our object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Alt-click on this edge, and then I can Shift-S and snap the cursor to selected. Then I can go into Object Mode and go to Object Set Origin to 3D Cursor. Now what I've done also, just as a quick side note, is if you right click on this, you can add it to your quick favorites. It says remove because I've already done this, but you can add any tool to your quick favorites. And once you do that, Q is the uh, shortcut for quick favorites. So since I'm always moving the origin around, I added both of these to my quick favorites. So instead of going up to object origin and choosing it from there, I can just hit Q and origin to 3D cursor. Now when I do that, it snaps my mirror modifier into place, and then I just make sure I enable clipping, and then I can collapse that mirror modifier. Okay, so now I can go back into edit mode, and we can define where we want our cutout to be. So I'm going to go roughly there, I think, and here. You know, the top view, so I can get a better sense of proportions. I'm not too worried about what the specific thickness is, but I would like it to be the same on both sides. So as long as this face right here is a square. It should be pretty similar, so I'm going to take this edge, double tap G, and slide it down just a little bit more. That'll work. Okay. So I've got that. Uh, now, 
I'm going to go into face, I'm going to select this face, and we're just going to delete it. You don't need it. And then I'm going to select this face, I'm going to hit P, and I'm going to separate that. And I'm going to rename that separation. Storm drain. Great. And I'm going to hide that for now. Because right now I just want to focus on this frame. Uh, which, we're already in a pretty good spot. we got a little bit more to do. Because that grate sits on a lip, so it doesn't fall through. And that's what we need to make right now. So, uh, oops, I accidentally closed that. Okay. So now, I'm going to, let's see. Before I add this edge loop, so this this topology right here is fine. Um, you can add ed edge loops across both ways. But I'd rather have the, the face loop here run around and be continuous. And there's a really easy way to do that. I'm just going to select the corner here. I'll select these two vertices, and then I'm going to select the corner one last. Hit M and merge at last. Okay, now you can see if I go to face mode and uh, alt click on one of these edges, it's going to select the face loop going around. Okay, that way when I need to add control loops, I can add one and it'll tighten up. Or, right now, I can add one and I'll keep it right in the center. And that makes this next part uh, much easier. So I'm going to select these two faces and I'm going to extrude it down just a little bit. Something like whatever, basically whatever I want the thickness of the grate to be. About that thickness, maybe a little bit more. We'll do that. And then I don't need these faces so we can get rid of those. And then I will select just these two edges again, and we will extrude it down some more. Hit Z to lock it to the Z axis. And that's pretty good. I'm going to grab these outside edges here, and I will extrude those down, and the Z axis as well. And then I'm going to hold down Control and temporarily turn on my vertex snapping, which I have set up here. And just snap it so it's the same height. Okay. Uh, now we're going to have this inner cavity, which we will be able to see in a little bit, depending on the lighting. So let's define that. I'm going to select these four border edges. And I'm going to go do this in side view. And I'm going to extrude it back in the Y direction. And I can snap it to kind of the limit up here, but I may need to pull this down, so I just want to give myself a little bit of room. So I'm going to move G and Y and move it back just a little bit. We may never see that, um, but we're here now, so we might as well take care of it. Okay, so we have that. And now what I want to do is fill in this side area. Okay. And so I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take, I'm going to start with these three edges, and I'm going to extrude it down in the Z direction, and I'll snap it to that same bottom height. Oh, let me turn on, sorry, I always forget to turn on screencast keys. Okay, uh, and now, let's see, I'm going to take this edge right here, Actually, I'm going to undo that extrusion. I'm going to select the same, those same edges, okay? But I'm also going to grab these two edges, and I'll just do this all at once. So, extrude Z, and I'm going to snap it here. All right. Also, you can see that this isn't perfectly level, so I'm just going to hit uh, go to vertex mode, scale it along the z-axis to zero, S Z zero. Those screencast keys didn't, uh, didn't work. Hmm. That's not great. Might look into a better solution for 
screencast keys. Uh, so that I, I snapped those all, so it's perfectly level. Uh, now I can move it down in the Z direction again and snap it to there, which is what I want. Then I'm going to extrude it down, Z direction again, snap it to there. And one last time, E to extrude, Z to lock it to that axis, and hold down control, snap it there. I did uh, all of that, so I can easily suck those two edges and F to fill that. F to fill that, and then we can see we got uh, six sides here, so it's going to make that nice and easy to fill. So fill that and fill that. Now, uh, again, I don't have great edge flow right here. You see that the edge kind of goes across and then down. I'd like this to go all the way around. And so the easiest, whoops, didn't want to do that. The easiest way to take care of that is I'm going to select a bunch of faces. So the easiest. Uh, C to select, uh, to bring up my circle select, and left click and drag, and I want to select all those faces. Okay. And I'm going to hit I to inset them, and then I don't want the, the face ring on the bottom, so I'm going to hit B to turn on border, and we'll just go to like there. That works. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that's going to work pretty well. Okay. I don't love this geometry right here, but it's probably never going to be noticed, um, and I'd rather focus on other things right now. So, uh, last thing is in here, let's just go ahead and close off the box on the back side. So I'm going to select these bottom two edges, Extrude them along the x-axis to the center until they snap together. And then we have this last uh, open area and just fill that in. Cool. So we have the geometry all there. Now we just need to make sure it looks good with a subsurface modifier. So we're going to add a subsurface modifier, set the levels to 2, right-click and shade smooth. Oh, in object mode, right-click and shade smooth. Uh, now we just need to add some control loops. Same th sort of thing we've done before a bunch of times. Uh, control R, add a control loop. Uh, now what you can also do if you want to keep things even, instead of adding one like that, is we can select this edge, right click, and in edge mode, make sure you have edge selection, offset edge slide. Select that, and now I'm going to hit E uh, to keep it even, and then make sure that's you hit F a couple times, you can see this little red dot here. Uh, that's which side it's going to stay even with. So you can see it stays perpendicular to that edge no matter how close I get to the corner. If I hit F, now it's on the other side and it's staying even with the corner, which is what I want. So I'm going to keep it relatively sharp. This is a metal grate after all. Something like that. And I want all the corners to be about the same, so I'm going to kind of remember this uh, thickness and follow that along. So I'm going to add one to the outside. I'll add them to the inside. Okay, now there's a few different ways that you could add control loops and keep things sharp. Um, we can do it with a bevel modifier, which I will show it at a different at a different time. But for now, we'll just do our control loops. Again, here I'm going to hit E to keep it even. Bring that in nice and snug. Okay, we need one here and one up here. And we'll need back there, back there, uh, let's see, here, okay, and in the back here. And 
and I think that's going to do it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. So, actually, I'm not quite happy. This okay, so you can see this is where my terrible topology is taking me. I want to add one across here, but the loop is going back up and around and across. And if I add that, now I've got this ridge here that I don't really want. So let's undo that and see if we can... Basically, I want this to go all the way back here. So let's try something here. I'm going to hit X. I'm going to dissolve those edges. So now I have this end gone, which could work because this is a flat, hard surface model. And again, you're not going to ever see this. Um, so if I just add this here, that does work. But I don't love it. Uh, I'm going to go into vertex mode here real quick, and I'm just going to select those three, M, merge at center, select those, merge at center, merge at center. There's actually a faster way to do this, but yeah, so let's let's grab this, uh, we'll grab this whole loop, X, uh, and go to edge mode, dissolve those edges. Okay, so now we have, I'll scale that along the Z to zero. It's not that back down. So now that's flat and it's running all the way back around, but we have still the same sort of problem. I'm going to get rid of this edge. Dissolve that. And I think, yeah, so we can I'm going to delete that face, then I'm going to add an edge loop here, and now I can fill that in, fill that in. So I kind of just swapped that, it's still not awesome uh, topology, but it allows me to get the edge loop where I want it and keep things a little simpler. Um, I could also go through and do the same um, get rid of that edge as well. Do the same kind of topology reduction down here that I did up here. But I'll, again, we're not going to ever see that, so that's enough time spent on that. Um, now we can go on to the grate, which is going to be a little easier. So I'm going to turn that back on. Uh, select it, just the grate, and then we can go into edit mode here. Uh, now this has the mirror modifier on it, and in this case, actually, I don't want the mirror modifier. So in object mode, I can remove the mirror modifier. Actually, I don't want to remove it, I want to apply it. Uh, so in 2.9, the modifiers have changed a little bit in how they work. Now you have to go to the drop down, you can click apply or control A if you're hovering over the modifier section. Okay, so I have that. Uh, I need to dissolve this center edge. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is inset it. Oops. In edit mode, there we go, inset. And you can see right now nothing is happening, and this confused me for a while because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, hit B and now it'll work. So what what had happened is I had boundary on. Or I actually I had boundary off, because right now it's on. Um, and when it's off, it won't inset on a face that doesn't have a connecting face. So since this is just a single face, single, uh, yeah, one polygon, it doesn't have connecting faces on any side, which means it's not going to inset on any side. So, this is, so as soon as I turn that on, then it uh, it works. So. Uh, I'm going to set the grate to right about there. Yeah, and this is just kind of eyeballing it. And let's look at the reference here for a moment. The way this is going to work is we are going to just uh, connect faces across. So I'm going to connect an edge here to an edge here. Let's see, we can we can draw on this, can't we? Yes, we can. 
So we can connect those, and that's going to be one long polygon. Now it's not a great uh, it's not great to have super long polygons. So when we get to texturing, we may end up needing to add a couple edge loops across. But again, for now, that will work great. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have all these polygons here. And it's just going to be an edge, an edge, an edge. So if you count those up, uh, it's, I believe, I believe it's 16 by 8. I wrote it down. I think it's 16 by 7. Um, so what that means, let me undo all of my drawing. Uh, or I will just erase it. Go away. Alright, good enough. So what we're going to do is add... If we want 16 edges, we need... Ooh, before we do that, let's delete... No, we don't want to delete that yet. Just kidding. Alright, so control R, and instead of scrolling up and counting, I'm just going to type in 15 and hit return, and then right click to keep them centered, and then in the other direction I'm going to hit 6, enter, and then right click to keep it in the center. Okay, so that's what we have. Now we can delete all those center faces, which again the easiest way uh, to do that is if you go to top view, uh, by default your selection uh, should be set to select box, otherwise you can just tap W a few times and it'll change. And you just draw across those and then delete those faces. Okay, so now that you have that, go into edge mode, and we want to connect this first edge here to the eighth on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hit F to fill that in. Fill that in. Fill that in. And just keep on going. Just every other one. And then once we finish this, we are done modeling. And that's just a handful of modifiers. And we'll be all set. Okay. And so because we also used the face from our frame, it's already at the right angle and right position. So that makes it easy. So we're going to add a solidify modifier. Okay. And that solidify mod modifier, you know, it does what you would expect. It gives it some thickness. Uh, it actually looks like we need to actually scale this out just a little bit because we have that gap, and I forgot I did it that way. So uh, in edit mode, I'm going to select everything, SX, scale it out a little bit. I want to keep some gap, and I'm just going to, let's see, I'm going to go into side view here, and you can see this is the edge here of the the frame lip. So I'm going to just manually just hit tap G from the side view um, so that it doesn't move in the X direction. And I'll just go right, right there. Again, leaving some gap. Uh, we have our solidify modifier. Um, actually, go back into the side view because we need to adjust the solidify modifier. And we want it to come down so it's resting on that lip. I don't want to move it down because I want to give it some more thickness, so I'm just going to slide the thickness up. Uh, I'm going to hold down shift so I have a little bit more control over it. Okay, 0 0.022 is pretty good. We'll keep it even thickness. And uh, yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to collapse that. And now uh, I want to give the edges a little bit of a bevel, so it's a great opportunity for a minor bevel modifier. So let's add a bevel modifier. And you can see by default that's I mean, it's kind of cool, it's just not what we want. Actually, I don't hate that at all. Hmm. I mean, what I was going to do is increase the segments to 4 and bring the amount down. And that's your more traditional sort of look. 
Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that for now. So I'll go up to four. There's the amount. And I'm going to add a subsurface modifier. Make sure we right click and shade smooth. Increase the subsurf a little bit. And there we go. There is our grate. Now we can hit number pad slash to get out of local view. And it's it's a minor feature, but I think it looks pretty good. And it just kind of starts to flesh out this world a little bit more. So there is our grate. And uh, in the next video, we will work on that truss that I was talking about, which is going to be, I'm actually kind of looking forward to that one. So that'll be, this guy here is going to use a lot of linked duplicates. Um, and again, the solidify modifier, bevel modifier, uh, and the array modifier a fair amount. So that will be next.